to the chemisode, which is a, um, it's kind of a calculation chemisode where I'm going to go through how to use the specific heat capacity equation to work out some calculations. Um, first of all, you need to know what the specific heat capacity is. Specific heat capacity, um, you should know, is the ability to um, store heat and it's also the ability um, or the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a certain amount of substance by one gram, by one, um, one degree Celsius. Energy in this equation is measured in joules, so it's measured in joules, just plain old joules, the measure of energy. Um, mass is always measured in grams in the spe specific heat capacity um, equation, and temperature is always measured in degrees Celsius or a thing called Kelvin as well. Oh, I won't go into Kelvin, but I'll just put it down there for people who know what Kelvin actually is. So let's go have a look at the first question. Um, we've got a list of specific heat capacities here which we're going to need to use. The first question here says calculate the amount of energy required to increase the temperature of 250 grams of water from 20 degrees to 50 degrees. Now, what tells me this is an um, equation where, or a question where I need to use this equation? It is when I see energy and a temperature increase. Something to do with energy and something to do with a temperature increase. This tells me I have to use this equation. So I'm going to quickly write this equation down. So that's energy, En, equals SHC, specific heat capacity, times my mass, times my delta temperature, my temperature change. Okay. Once I have this written down, I can then start to substitute values into this equation and work out what I need to find out. So, first of all, I need to calculate energy. So my energy is going to be as is, energy equals. My specific heat capacity, um, what type of substance am I using? I'm using water. So I look for my specific heat capacity of water. Water, you learn the, and remember that water is 4.18. 4.18. <coughs> Excuse me. My mass of my substance, I'm using 250 grams of water, so it's just 250 grams. And my temperature change, my delta T, oh sorry, my delta T is the difference between um, my increase in temperature, 20 up to 50 is 30 degrees Celsius. So all I need to do to calculate my energy is put in this into a calculator. <coughs> Excuse me again. 4.18 times 250 times 30 equals 31,350. Okay, that's my dog in the background barking, but that's your amount of energy required to heat this amount of water by this much. This is in joules. Notice this is a large number, um, 31,350 is quite a large number. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that back and I'm going to convert that into kilojoules by dividing by a thousand. So I'm going to go 31.35 kilojoules, just because it's an easier number to work with. Um, you should be able to quickly go between kilojoules and joules, just it's a factor of a thousand between the two. So um, one kilojoule is a thousand joules. There you have it there. That's the first question done. So it requires 31.35 kilojoules to increase the temperature of 250 grams of water by 30 degrees. Let's have a look at the next question. Um, the next question here is a bit more interesting. Um, obviously I've written this incorrectly here, I've fixed it up on your notes, so if you go into the Edmodo webpage, you can download the notes. Um, a 250 gram sample of substance requires 3.4 kilojoules to increase the temperature by 35 degrees Celsius. What is the substance? Now, what you see, um, why do I know I need to use this equation? Once again, this question says something to do with a temperature increase or a temperature change and something to do with energy here as well. So let me do that and I'll write down the equation. En equals SHC times mass times delta T. All right, every time I do an equation, every time I do a question which involves a calculation, I always write down the formula I'm using. That just helps me, always, same as maths. You always should write down the formula you're going to use. Same as physics, write down the formula. Each so on and so forth, write down the formula, show you're working out. Anyway, let's go into this. I've got a amount of energy here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this energy into where energy is. Notice this is in kilojoules. My equation needs to have it in joules. So my energy is 3,400 joules because 3.4 kilojoules convert to joules here, first of all. My specific heat capacity. Now, I don't know what the substance is, so that's the type of thing that I want to work out, SHC. My mass is given to me as 250 grams. And my temperature change, my increase in temperature, increase temperature by 35 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Celsius. So what I can do is I want to work out what my specific heat capacity is. To do that, I need to um, basically solve for specific heat capacity here. So I'm going to do 250 times 30 is specific heat capacity times 7,500 7, equals 3,400. Okay, and then I'm going to quickly just rearrange this equation to get specific heat capacity as a subject. So specific heat capacity is going to equal 3,400 divided by 7,500 which is going to equal 3400 divided by 7500 equals, is that right? Hang on. Yep. That's not right. Where are we? Ah, 35 degrees. That's why. That should be 35 degrees. And I'll redo this. That should be 8750. And thus, my answer will be a little bit better and it will be 0 0.38 um, 8. So that is my specific heat capacity. What this tells me is I can use this to identify what the substance is in my list here. Uh, specific heat capacity is 0 0.388. That corresponds to pretty much what zinc is. So my substance is zinc. Okay, so that's using the specific heat capacity to find out what the substance actually is. Okay, working out what the specific heat capacity is. Each time, I always, I always write down my um, equation first. All right, question number three. Um, this is a bit of a different question. Which of the following substances? in the list above would become the warmest when 500 kilojoules of energy is used to heat each one. So let's have a look at this. Um, we're assuming that we got the same amount of substance and we're just going to say which one's going to increase the most. As you know from um, your knowledge of what specific heat capacity actually is, um, it's the amount of energy to raise the temperature. If you have a high specific heat capacity, it's going to take a lot of energy to raise the temperature. If you've got a low specific heat capacity, it's not going to take as much energy and it's going to heat up a lot quicker. So if you're looking at this, um, water has a very high specific heat capacity, so it's going to, it won't heat up as quickly as other things. The thing with the lowest heat capacity is actually mercury here. This has the lowest heat capacity. That means mercury will be the one that's going to heat up the quickest and be the hottest after you apply a certain amount of energy to it. Right? So if we add 500 kilojoules to each one of these, the one that's going to get the warmest is going to be the one with the lowest heat capacity, and that's mercury. So Hg, mercury, is going to be the one that is going to heat up the quickest. Let's look at question four. 200 gram sample of water held at SLC is heated using 40 kilojoules. Calculate the final temperature of the sample. Now, once again, we've got energy and we've got an increase in temperature or a change in temperature. That tells me, write down my formula. Always write down your formula. No matter what happens, write down the formula, you have an idea of where you're going to go. So, energy equals SHC times mass times delta T. My energy, 40. 40 kilojoules, which means 40,000 joules. This is going to be equal to the specific heat capacity of your substance. Your substance is water, so therefore it's going to be 4.18, times your mass, which is going to be 200 grams, times your delta T, which you don't know. We can rearrange this and have delta T as equal to 40,000 divided by 4.18 times 200, 
and let's work out what our answer is. 40,000 divided by bracket open, 4.18 times 200. Now, I'm just going to show you this in terms of a calculator. If you're doing a calcula calculation like this, if you've got more than one thing on the bottom, put it into brackets. That way your calculator will know what you're doing. So notice how I've got this all on the bottom. That goes in brackets on the bottom of my calculation. That is equal to 47.85 degrees Celsius. That is my temperature change. Now, it doesn't actually ask for temperature change, it says final temperature. Now, if you can imagine, temperature final is going to be equal to your temperature initial plus your temperature change, your delta temperature. So my initial temperature was SLC, which is 25 degrees Celsius. My temperature change was 47.85. This total temperature change, then my final temperature is 72.85 degrees Celsius because I need to add on my temperature change to my initial temperature. That's how you look at final temperature. It's very important to read the question and work out what the question is actually asking because nine times out of ten people would stop here. Well, not nine times out of ten, probably one time out of ten, but that's too many in my opinion. Read the question, work out what the question wants you to find out, and then follow it through. Always starting off with your formula. Always starting off with your formula. Question five is another explanation um, question. Explain why coastal towns have a milder climate than inland towns or towns that are inland. Coastal towns have lots of H2O and inland towns have less H2O around them. Water um, obviously has a high specific heat capacity compared with other things and therefore it has the ability to retain the heat better. Because it has a high heat capacity, it has the ability to retain the heat and therefore coastal towns, which have lots of um, water, can retain the heat better than towns that are inland, which has less water, so therefore it has less ability to retain the heat. So that's the idea with coastal towns versus inland towns. It's kind of an explanation question, more of a more than a calculation one anyway. Last thing is question six, and I'll just quickly do the first thing. Obviously, I see energy here, and I see temperature, and I see the yeah, heating, so it's increase in temperature, change in temperature. So I'm going to go that equals that times mass times delta T. Okay. My energy, 200 kilojoules. That actually translates to 200,000 joules. Remember, energy always has to be in joules. Specific heat capacity, what we're looking at, silver. So let's have a look at silver. Silver is 0.223, so 0 0.223. My mass is two kilograms. Mass has to be in grams, so I need to change that to 2,000 grams times delta T, because we haven't been given that. We've given a final temperature, but we haven't given a temperature change. We need to work out what it started with. So therefore, we will need to work out how much it changed by. Let's have a look at this. If I look at this, I go delta T equals 200,000 divided by 0 0.223 times 2,000. So therefore, we'll go on my calculator, 200,000 divided by bracket. 233 times... One that sorry, two thousand, isn't it? Equals four hundred and forty eight point four three. This is my change in temperature, remember. Delta T change in temperature. What does my question ask for? It asks for the temperature before heating. So if you can imagine temperature initial, my initial temperature is going to be equal to my temperature final, take away my temperature change. All right, just, just using your brain and working that out, you can understand how I'm working this out. So I'll go to my temperature final, which is 500 degrees, which is written here. Take away my temperature change, 448.43. And that will be equal to, from memory, about 51.57 degrees Celsius. So that means that the silver, before we heated it with all this energy, had a temperature of this amount. 
that's it. That is using this, pretty much all the ways that you can use this equation. All right. Each time I'm noticing I have energy and I have temperature. Sorry, energy and temperature. Um, I've got energy here and I've got temperature here. I've got energy here, I've got temperature. Every time I've got energy and temperature, I write down my equation and then I can do some calculations with it. Hopefully this has helped you out. What you can do now is go and head and do your turn, these questions, which are on the second page of your these notes. And um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, have fun. Remember, you can um, email me at questions or you can go on to Edmodo. My email is Gaudi dot jason at gmail dot com all right and i look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions if not happy studying take it easy